This is your boy, JG, back in the building. UFC 244 was, I don't know, nine days away, but there's something that's been on my mind. We get into it right now. What's up, y'all? Yo? Your boy, JG, in the building. I'm on a solo mission. No AB today. Shout out to my mans. Shout out Double M. He stayed putting in work. Hit me over the head with knowledge. As I stated before, UFC 244, I think it's nine days ago. Great event. They put on a hell of a show. Madison Square Garden. It was Liddy. I'm pissed off for two reasons. I'm not really pissed off, but I do want to get into a couple of things. I love Twitter. Twitter's dope. Shout out Twitter. I'm on Twitter. I got a bootleg argument with a lady on Twitter because I'm not getting into that. Um, but Twitter fans, Twitter MMA fans, similar to boxing fans, they kind of live in a world of delusion or disillusion, whatever the hell it is. The main event, UFC 244, Madison Square Garden, Jorge Masvidal versus Nate Diaz for the BMF Bad Mother boop, Belt um, at 170 pounds. Dope event, dope card, dope fight. Um, I predicted that that it wouldn't be a stoppage, but I predicted that Masvidal would put a beating on Nate Diaz. A lot of people were really excited about the bout because of the knockouts. You have the Darren Till knockout for Masvidal. Then you had the Ben Askren and Starch in five seconds. You had that. Yeah, Diaz coming off the long layoff, coming back, fighting Anthony Pettis at 170 pounds. He was just too big for Pettis, just weighed on him, was heavy on him, and got him out of there. Pettis had suffered a couple injuries during the course of the bout. But one of the things that I observed in that fight against Anthony Pettis is Diaz didn't seem to have the same steam that he had before. That a crispness, a sharpness, uh, he was big, and he utilized his weight advantage, and he got Pettis out of there. But it, for me, in my opinion, it just wasn't a, an impressive performance. So that's why I made the prediction that I made. Masvidal having all of that momentum and really beating the shit out of people, I think made that an easy prediction for me to make. With that being said, the fight gets made. It goes down. Shout out to The Rock. He was yelling and screaming. He was hella swolled up. He was yoked up. And he had a t-shirt that like painted on his body. The Rock, he, I understand he's yoked, but he should just go to sweatpants only. Sweatpants, t-shirts, and blazers. You just too damn swole to be wearing button downs and slacks and shit looking like a Picasso painting shout out Picasso I guess that's not a bad thing but so the fight goes down Masvidal just puts it on him he beats him down and ends up it ends up getting stopped after the third round due to cuts TKO victory for Masvidal and Twitter goes crazy this is bullshit and he only gets better in the fourth and fifth round and you should wait and see and oh man it uh, what uh, that's a real question I have is what that what well my first question would be to the the man fans and casuals or the people that only follow one or two fighters what indication did you have that he was going to turn that around other than the fact that the fourth and fifth round were coming so answer that question second of all if you watch the fight if you watch it then if you go back and watch it now Masvidal just beat him down upstairs downstairs body work the kicks of the body were vicious I mean, he, there was nothing. He got dropped multiple times. His eyeball was floppy. His shit was hanging open. It was disgusting. So the fight gets stopped. So we're nine days removed, and I still, I'll still i open my Twitter right now, and there's, there's going to be someone saying, well, if it's going to the fourth and the fifth round, we know Nate would have won. What are you talking about? What? Well, he gets cut in every fight, so he should just be cut and have his shit hanging open now just because it happened before? What kind of rationale and logic is that? You got cats going at each other on Twitter, on the internet, calling names. We're not even talking about MMA anymore. We're talking about some other type of shit where, I mean, fuck you, I'll roll up. Whoa. Dude, do you know Nate Diaz or Monster? You don't know either one of them? You don't? So why do you want to fight me? I think it's a fair question. I don't want to get beat the hell up, and I don't want to have to stomp you out because you think Nate Diaz should have. You know what? They say shit like, let's say the fight went five rounds, right? And Masvidal just continued to pound him and just kick him and just beat his face. And he was cutting both this eye and that eye. The man fans would have been like, well, if it was a six round, he would have came out and got it done. There are no six rounds. What are we talking about? Anyway, that's the first thing I want to cover. Shout out to my man, Jorge Masvidal. Uh, shout out to Nate Diaz, you know, showing up, being tough, taking that ass whooping like a man. Uh, his brother though he says some crazy shit today talking about well that's really my but man fuck out of here you haven't been fighting stop everybody cloud chasing now everybody want that masvidal love they want to get that three piece that they want that buffet 
At this point, Masvidal, the way he's handing out snacks, he Costco in this motherfucker. He Sam's. He he a damn soup kitchen in downtown Seattle. He got it for everybody. Shout out to my man's. Shout out to the three hundred five. Shout out to that card. Moving on to the next. First thing before I even get into this topic, shout out to my man AB. We had a text conversation about this, and uh, when he watches this, he'll know what's coming up. Kevin Lee, what up, Kevin Lee? You decapitated a human being inside the octagon. I have to shout out the architects and the people who construct and assemble the rings. Because had that been a poor job or an amateur bout at a community college, he would have went through the ring from a head kick. You did your thing. But I want to tell you to pump the brakes a little bit. Now we understand you were at 55 taking ass whoopings. You move up to welterweight, took a couple more ass whoopings. Changed team, got your nutrition right, went back down a ladder to 55 and got a crucial ass victory, an impressive victory. It might be a knockout of the decade. It's in competition for that for sure. I, but why you chop him after he hit the cage? When he hit the cage and shit and you just came and chopped him one more, that, that was excessive. I know you go until you get stopped, but damn, you kicked him through the damn cage and ring. Now, let me tell you why I'm irritated with you. Shout out Kevin Lee. When you get fucked up, you have to celebrate and communicate on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, if you have it, the way you do when you win. So I'll hop on the gram. I see 800 postings from you about how my man was a meme and someone had a RIP gravesite thing next to him, a hat, X'd out eyes, all this shit. And quite honestly, it was warranted because he did get handled. Shout out to uh, Gregor Gillespie. But when you take an L... I want to see the same shit Like if you get fucked up And choked out You need to put pictures Of yourself choked out Say damn that's a tight choke That's deep Shout out Ben Askren He does stupid shit like that Like he'll get beat the fuck up And then celebrate his own ass whooping So shout out to him I will give you one thing that Credit for one thing though Kevin Love You did put a, a questionable video Not Kevin Shout out to the Cleveland Cavaliers I said Kevin Love <laughs> He's probably gonna get traded Anyway another conversation For another Kevin Lee I will give you credit I forgot who whooped your ass But you did put a real sad video up and you had the hoodie on and, you know, I don't know what's next for me. And, uh, you know, this MMA is a tough sport. So you did climb yourself a little bit there. So I'm going to let you off the hook a little bit. But come on, man, don't celebrate too much. You got one win, put a couple together and talk some shit. We get too excited. Um, but like I said before, UFC 244, it was a tremendous event. Nate Diaz fans, shout out to them. You guys be on some other type shit. It was a good fight. Masvidal did his thing. It'll be interesting to see what happens with him next. That'll be really interesting to see. You got the Usman, uh, Kobe Covington fight coming up if somebody doesn't pull out. Um, and then what else is really compelling at welterweight? And I don't want to hear no shit about no Conor McGregor and cats who ain't active no more GSP and shit. No. Oh, oh speaking of cats who aren't active anymore, Tyrone Woodley, what's the deal, baby? You know, you was beating cats up. You took a tough loss. That's cool. But you were the champ. You were on a nice little winning streak. You was fighting everybody. Shout out Josh Koscheck. You beat his ass. Hey, that was an old fight, but damn, he whooped his ass. That just came to my mind. But where you at, man? You training? I seen some bootleg stuff on Instagram. You Thailand and Nick Swick or what? All that shit. We need we need some news, man. I read an old report stated that you hope to get something done by the end of the year. Let me check my. You run out of time. Shout out Tyron Willie. So I want to see what's up or what's going to be next for Jorge Masvidal. I want your guys' thoughts as well. Drop that in the comment section. We're going to get out of here. This is your boy, JG, on a solo mission. No AB. Shout out Double M. Uh, shout out to the team. Shout out Nisian Built. They hold us down. Shout out to my man, Doug Baldwin's with a Z. Shout out to my man, AJ, holding it down on the snacks. This is what we do. This is an exaggeration and experience. We in the building. Like I said before, like, subscribe, bell icon for notification. We bring you more heat. We out.